Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World. And in this video, we're going to have a look at what's in flower in my English garden in late June. And first we can see that the tiger lilies are just opening. They're looking nice and strong. I have actually tied them up. Now let's see how I've tied them up. I've put some green uh, little sticks in here with some green twine and so I'm holding them up with that so that uh, they don't flop too much. I really like these lilies. They're so easy to grow. Uh, just water them, feed them as and when. The only thing is, of course, as everybody now knows, you have to look out for the lily beetle and you have to look every day and take them off. Now, what I've been doing recently is spraying them with garlic spray. And I think it has worked, but not 100%. So you could crush some garlic, uh, sift it out, and then use a garlic spray. And that does help. Now, one thing I'm noticing here is that the orange, how well does it go with this red? I think I need some white lilies in here and indeed other colored lilies. So I think for next year, I'm going to see what else I can put in here and redo this pot. These lilies have been in this pot for many years. So I think it's time now to change this up for next year once these lilies have finished. Now let's just move over across the garden to my other lilies. Again, this is in a pot. It's a small pot, quite small actually. Oh, some weeds in there. As per usual, I just have a little look round whenever I'm passing to see if there are any lily beetles. I've only found about three or four on this plant the whole of the spring and early summer. And while we are here, let's just see the tree lilies. As you know from a previous video, I actually planted nine tree lilies. Three sets of three, and here they are. So they've grown about three, three and a half feet tall. And they are going to flower. There we are. So that'll be interesting. And on the tree lilies, I have heard that the lily beetles do come onto tree lilies, but I haven't seen any as yet. And I've got three sets of three tree lilies, uh, two sets in the front garden and this uh, trio here. And I'll be showing those on future videos as they flower, because they are going to be quite colorful. I ordered some rather colorful tree lilies. We'll just make our way back onto the patio towards one of the roses. But in the meantime, the hostas are starting to flower. And up the pergola, I've got the Albertine. The first of the Albertine flowers is dropping its petals. And let's just have a closer look at the blooms. These blooms are just over and in fact I need to deadhead some of these. Try and encourage further blooms. Also on the patio is the rambling rector. Which as I've mentioned before is a very vigorous rambler. And as a reminder, this is the pot that it's in. 
So as long as you give a plant enough food and water, anything can grow in a pot, including a tree. So the rambling roses, they have the smaller flowers and they don't repeat bloom. So you get a fantastic show early on in the year, but then that's it on the ramblers. But they can grow 20, 30, 40 feet across a house. They can look absolutely magnificent. Whereas the climbers tend to only grow, say, 6 to 12 feet. But they do repeat bloom, and we'll see my two climbing roses later. Let's go over towards the pond and let's see what's in flower at the pond. We've got the lesser spearwort. There are plenty of water lily flowers, although at the moment, as it isn't sunny and it's first thing in the morning, they're not open. Foxgloves showing through from the woodland area. Oh, they've done so well, these foxgloves. I have fed them well. And this plant here is a, let's see if I can remember the name of it. Lycnius, is it? It does self-seed and so you have to watch this plant as it can take over. The moonfire dahlia is going to flower shortly. Spectacular and the bees love that so we'll visit that again at another time. This aquilegia was magnificent this year, absolutely magnificent. As you can see here from the uh, spent flower heads, self-seeded. Peony just still in flower. Now I believe this one might be Kansas. I'm not totally sure, but it might be. And all these poppies have self-seeded. Now, could anyone tell me the exact variety or type of poppy this is? It arrived by itself, and I have called it Oriental Poppy. But someone has told me it might not be an, Ori an, an Oriental Poppy. So, if we have any poppy experts, please let me know. The calendulas coming along. Yeah, really not, I really like that colour in summer. That bird you can hear there, it's a dunnock and it's standing... There we are, it's standing on top of a holly tree. It's favourite, it's new favourite place. It used to like being on the roof of the house but now it's decided the holly tree is the place to be. And there we are, there's its call again. The grandma's necklace is coming along. It's 
So I've come round here to show you some of the leaves on these foxglove. Just look at the size of the leaves on these foxgloves. Just look at this. I gave them a good feed and they've loved it. And while we're here, we can see in the corner of this bed, there's a Philadelphus mock orange. We grow a lot of Philadelphus in Britain and the scent is glorious. That's what's in flower in the back garden. Let's move through to the front garden where there's some spectacular things to show you. This is the peony that's in the wrong place, but it's produced two blooms. Yeah, very nice. Don't know what variety this is. And straight ahead, we have the second of four mock oranges that I have. This one's done really well this year. Nice to have a mock orange near the front door. So every time you come out of your house, you've got this lovely scent. And something I haven't shown you before, but I have been growing Angel's Trumpet, Brugmansias, and they've just started flowering. I bought them as cuttings from someone on a Brugmansias uh, news group site on Facebook, and I bought them at a pound each, and I bought four cuttings. I put them in water. They spent a month or so in water growing their roots. Then I gingerly potted them up probably in March or so this year. And then I put them out outside in, um, well, as soon as the frost's finished, really. I don't like them indoors, even in the porch, because they do suffer from uh, spider mite. And I don't want spider mite in the house. Well, don't want it outside the house either, for that matter. So the thing to remember with these tropicals is they want food and water. Uh, I potted them up. I had the, they started to flower and they were in slightly smaller pots. And the other day I put them in these bigger pots, pure manure. I put them in pure horse manure and I water them every single day. So let's have a look how they're doing. This one is just starting. Two flowers there. The four flowers are just over on this one. It's got two more over there. These scent beautifully, particularly in the late afternoon and evening. So I am really excited about these. I have grown them before many years ago and I thought I would have another go with them. See how big I can get them this year. So as I say, that's pure horse manure they're in. A lot of insects like the leaves. They get attacked a lot, but they seem to be able to grow the leaves faster than they get eaten. These trumpets, angel's trumpet, they hang down. There is another variety of plant that's very similar called daturas and those flowers uh, point upwards. So you always know a Brugmansia angel's trumpet because the trumpets are pointing down. And by the way, just to let you know, these are poisonous. So if you do handle them, maybe best to wash your hands afterwards. And here we've got the other erysimum and it's just started to flower. So I'm expecting this uh, perennial wallflower to send up dozens of shoots and flower all summer. 
behind we've got the two containers that I planted up and the canna lilies doing well again they want lots of food and water this is the fuchsia that I pruned back for the first time uh, earlier this spring beautiful and this will flower right the way through the third of my mock oranges there we are This choice here does flower, but not as profusely as the Ternata. But I like it for its bright leaves. Now let's have a look at this Erigeron, I think it's called. So this Erigeron is not the same as the Mexican Fleabane, but they're both called Erigerons. I discovered the other day. Oh, and here are three more of the tree lilies. So as they're starting to flower, it looks as though this will be their height for this year. Say three feet. Hopefully double in size next year. Now the Berber is here, the Darwinii, that has the lovely yellow flowers. We've now got the berries. I'll leave those on. Often you take off berries and spent blooms so that the plant can use its energy into producing more growth, more roots and not producing seed but on this particular case I think I'm going to leave these I quite like these I don't know whether the birds like them or not I'm not sure I'll watch and see whether any of the birds take them we'll just pan round now to my two climbing roses This one has been deadheaded recently, lots of new buds, so they come in waves. As you deadhead them, of course, then you don't have a very good display for the next week or so, then more blooms come out. Both of these scent absolutely beautifully. They do drop their petals though, so you do have to keep picking up the petals and deadheading all summer well worth it we'll just move down the path now past the philadelphus the osteospermum love these they close up at night and open up in the morning Now you have to watch with some osteospermum, they are not very hardy at all, even in this garden in zone 9A. So I'm coming down the path here because I want to show you the lavender. I pruned back this lavender last year. So now you can see what the lavender looks like in the summer after I'd pruned it last year, late last year. And here we have the big-leafed mophead hydrangea, the white one. 
and it's uh, it's flowering already. This is the one that I really have to water. If I miss out on watering, it will sulk. The, flower, the, the leaves will droop and the flowers will droop. So they start off a kind of lime green, don't they? And soon change to white. So it's doing really well, really well. Again, I do feed it and water it a lot. And next to it, do you remember from another video where I hadn't looked after these penstemons at all? I'm going to prune back the penstemons. I've been threatening to do that for a few years. Uh, they used to look gorgeous and I've neglected them. So it's time to put that right. And I decided this year to look after them. I cut them all the way back, right back, and to see what would happen. And here we are, late June, flowering their heads off. I can also see some grass growing through here. Look out for the grass, see the grass here. So uh, the cooch grass. So I will, there's another one. I'll tease that out by the roots. These will flower all summer long. So as the flowers go over, the whole flower head goes over, simply cut it off and it'll reflower. Because this hydrangea has grown so much, it grew over some of the penstemons that were under there. So I have moved them and I moved them to there. And those are they, and they flowered straight away. I pulled off one or two bits and that's those there that look as though they're going to survive. And the ones in front here, these are also penstemons. And these are ones that I bought as plug plants. I found it tough going keeping these alive. Oh, and that could do with watering there. So these are light colored ones. I thought that if I got light colored ones, they would look nice in front of the deep red ones. Let's go down to another plant that's in flower. Just passing the lace cap hydrangea. And the white borage just started to open. I noticed the first bee on it yesterday. And behind, just as a matter of interest, just behind here somewhere, are three more tree lilies. Having to fight for space with the hydrangea. The white peonies and most of the blooms are over now. Just three remaining. I'm really pleased. Oh, there's a bee on the borage. Oh yeah, he likes the borage. There's a little bit of a story here. Here we have my fourth mock orange big old mock orange and I shall we say rejuvenated it in Paul T style which basically means cutting it totally to the ground and a few people are rather dubious as to whether it would survive I hadn't it <laughs> I hadn't intended pruning it down to here I was going to take that much off. Once I start pruning, I don't stop. So let's just have a look and see whether it's survived or not. 
and indeed it has and it's growing well. But because I cut this very large mock orange down, it allowed the shrub next to it to get some air and some light. This is a Deutzia and it's the first time it has flowered properly. Looking good and just look at these healthy stems and new growth. It's decided it wants to put on as much growth as possible before this mock orange starts competing again for space. So we've got three big shrubs here. The Hydrangea, the Philadelphus and the Deutzia. I love big shrubs and all these shrubs flower. And in fact, there's another shrub next to the Deutzia there, and that is a lilac. It's the smaller lilac, the refined lilac, Kim. I think it's a Korean lilac. And we've missed it. It was in glorious flower. But of course, I videoed it while it was in flower, and I'll show you what it looked like. But this, the scent from this Kim uh, lilac, filled the garden. It was, it was the best scent of the whole garden this, this year. So I'm really pleased with this, this one here. This lilac, Kim. Doesn't look much now. Oh, but it is putting on some nice new growth there. I would like that to grow larger. Whether it will or not, I'm not sure. Now we did miss some of the flowers of these azaleas. They came and went between videos, so I'm going to show you what they look like when they're in glorious flower. And what I'm pleased about is just look how nicely they're putting on extra growth. This new growth. After the flowers, I love to see new growth. Even this little rhododendron, which was knocked back a few winters ago. Look at this new growth here. Love it. Look at that. This uh, evergreen azalea as well. And here are the three deciduous azaleas. That's this one here. And this one here. Now you see how there's a little bit of yellowing here. Unusual in a way for my garden because it's slightly acidic, but that tells me it's just lacking in iron. So I'm going to give that extra feed of sequestered iron. Always a good idea for these acid loving plants. And in fact, the leaves here look as though, look as though they're suffering from the same situation. So I will uh, pay attention to this plant as well. I hope you've enjoyed this little look round my English garden in late June. Thanks for watching Paul T's World and I'll see you next time. Bye.